What's up YouTube? This is Print Practical. This series of videos is hopefully going to teach you how to take a technical drawing of, say, an iPhone and draw that in Fusion 360. And then once we get to that point, we can use that model to create accessories for that item. So in this video, we are going to draw a iPhone 16 Pro Max based on the technical drawings that are supplied to accessory manufacturers and then we are going to design a case for that iPhone. I need to keep these videos a reasonable length, so I'm gonna break it up into a few parts. For this video, we're gonna draw the basics of the iPhone, and then the second video, we'll draw the nitty gritty details like the cameras, and then for the final video, we'll show how can we use that as a tool to create a case or an accessory for that device. One thing I will mention is I'm going to assume you have somewhat of a basic knowledge of how to 3D draw, so when I say make a sketch here or extrude this feature, I'm assuming you already know what I mean. Now before we hop into the drawing, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe, throw a comment down below what is something you wanna learn how to draw or anything that I could use for future videos. I really appreciate it, let's hop into it. So like I mentioned previously, Apple releases an accessory design guideline specification and you can find this on Apple's developer website. I'll put a link in the description below but this contains all of the technical drawings of all of the Apple products that you can design accessories for. I'm going to be referencing this document throughout the video and I will take little screenshots and put them on the screen when I am showing what dimensions I'm drawing. So to start out, let's start by drawing the actual body of the phone. We're gonna make a sketch and looking at the Apple documentation here, it says that the product width is 77.58 millimeters and the height is 163.03 millimeters. So in general, when I make a body like this, I'm also gonna create some construction lines at the midpoints because for example, we're gonna draw the corners of the device and we wanna be able to mirror those corners horizontally and vertically to make sure that they all match each other so that way we don't have to draw them out each time. So let's draw the corner. So first we are going to zoom in to the top left corner, which is detailed in the specification. So looking at the drawing, there are five points that we need to dimension. So I'm gonna select the point tool. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna dimension these individually as per the spec. So the first one, we're gonna take dimension from the top line, and that is going to be 0 0.04. And then the second one from the top line is 0 0.89. Third one, 3.74. Fourth one, 8.36. And the last one, it's going to be 13.75. And now we'll do the same against the line here. And I think it's just a mirror of those values, yeah. So, and 0 0.04. Okay, so this is the curve of the corner of the phone. You know, if you were to just go in with your calipers and try and measure this, you're not gonna get this precise. Uh, this is uh, something that you definitely need a technical drawing for, so it's super helpful that Apple supplies this information to their accessory manufacturers. Now we're going to draw a spline so I'm gonna do a fit point spline. I'm going to click across all these dots. And 
and then hit OK. So we have our spline here. Now I actually made this a construction line, so I'm going to click it and turn off construction. And that is the curve of the phone. So now we're gonna take this corner of the phone that's very precise, and we're going to mirror it horizontally and vertically to get all four corners of the device. So to do that, we are going to click the mirror button. We're going to select this curve, and we're going to select the middle vertical line there and hit OK, and that will give us our top right corner. And then we're going to hit mirror again, select those two curves and mirror those over the horizontal line. And now we have something that's starting to look like an iPhone. So we're gonna finish this sketch and we are going to extrude out the base of the iPhone. And if I take a look at the specification here, it says that the product thickness is 8.25 millimeters. So we have the base of the phone now. So next we're going to draw the buttons on the phone. So we are going to look at the uh, side like power button and we're going to look at the camera control button for the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So we are going to select this side here. The first thing we're gonna draw is the side button uh, is what the technical drawing refers to it as, but it's the power button. Um, I can reference the top line of the drawing by hitting P, clicking on this line and hitting OK, uh, because most of the drawing gives a reference to the top of the device for different distances. So we'll put a line there. Um, so the power button I can see is uh, 2.66 millimeters wide. So let me draw a rectangle here in the middle of the device. Two point six six millimeters wide and it is 8.85 times two millimeters long you can see they give you the distance from the midpoint of the button to the very peak of that arc that uh, is the end of the button so that is the outline of our button and we still need to put the rounded edge in here but let's give it one second because we need to uh, get this button to be located where it's supposed to be. So uh, they give us a dimension from the rear of the device to the midpoint of the button. So from the rear of the device. And then if you hold shift, you can select the midpoint of the button. Why? There we go. And they're saying that that is 4.12 millimeters. Okay, so it is in its proper location horizontally here. And then from the top of the phone to the midpoint of the button, they are saying that it is 55.33 millimeters. Now, they don't mention anything about the arc of the end of the button. So since they don't mention that, uh, as a technical drawler, I would assume that it is just a perfect circle. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just draw a circle to the edge of the button, and then I will use the tangent constraint to make sure it's tangent to all three edges. And then you can also do that same thing at the bottom or I'm going to just put a construction line at the midpoint of this button, and then I will mirror this circle over that middle line. Okay, so that button is done for now. Uh, we're going to move along to the camera control button. Now this is interesting. I drew my iPhone 14 Pro Max and it doesn't have this button. Technically, this button doesn't actually get extruded from the device, but I'm going to extrude it a very tiny bit just to show where it is, so that way when I draw a case or an accessory, I can plan for that. So, um, let's start out by uh, taking the dimensions of the button. So I'm gonna use my rectangle tool, same thing we did for the power button. Um, 
it is saying that it is 3.03 millimeters wide uh, and it is how tall they're saying 8.8 or 8.55 yeah. times 2 and then it references the rear of the device again midpoint to the rear they're saying that that's going to be 4.12 and then it is going to be 111.62 from the top of the device One eleven point sixty two. Yes. Alrighty, and then same deal. They do not give any details of the arc, so I am going to just make a circle. Do the whole tangent deal again, and then I will draw my mirror line. And I will mirror this circle over this line done uh, finished sketch we are done with that and now these will technically get extruded different lengths uh, the camera control button is zero millimeters extruded so it is flush with the device uh, I'm gonna push it out the same amount as the side button just for when we draw our accessory uh, the side button comes out 0.45 millimeters. So I'm going to select the profile of the button and I'm gonna do the same for the camera control. I know it's flush to the device, but I am going to still extrude it. And now it's hard to see, but we do have a representation of that power button and the camera control button on the phone. Now let's move to the other side of the phone. We are going to select that. Now, once again, we want to project the top line since most of the drawing refers to the top line. You can press P, click on the top line of the phone. Okay. Now that gives us a reference point to the top of the device. Uh, it looks like we have a action button, volume up, volume down. Um, and there's a sim tray. I'm not going to draw that in because if I put it, you know, if I'm designing a case is my intention, I don't care about the sim tray. Um, so that's up to you. If you want to add a little extracurricular onto drawing this, uh, feel free to add the sim tray, but uh, I'm not going to. So this process is going to look very similar to the other side. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle and I'm actually just going to I'm actually just gonna draw a few here. So that way I have my volume buttons as well. We'll start with the action button. Um, so the action button is uh, 34.08 millimeters from the top. Uh, so once again, they're referencing the back of the phone to give the horizontal dimension, which is now on the left side. Um, so I'm going to select the midpoint there. And that is going to be uh, 4.12, which is probably the midpoint of the device. I didn't do the math. All right, so the action button uh, for length is going to be 3.45 times two. And then we're gonna do the same deal here again, where we do a tangent circle. Now this is interesting because this button is so small. Oh, forgot to do the horizontal dimension of the button, uh, which is 2.66. There we go. And then uh, I'm going to do the same deal where I do a mirror line. Mirror this over this line. Donezo. Okay, our action button is complete now. Volume up. We are going to do a dimension from the middle here to the top, which is going to be 48. 
Uh, we are going to do the dimension from the rear of the phone to the middle of the button. And what did I say that was? It was 4.12. And then the button itself is 2.66 wide. And for height of the button, it is 5.60 times two. And you're gonna see like times four on the technical drawing. Now, what that means is that that dimension is used four times. So it's actually used twice by the volume up twice by the volume down button. So that's why it says times four. It's a little confusing, um, but if you were to accidentally uh, multiply that distance by four for each button, you'll see that it looks really weird, especially if you're familiar with iPhones. So that button is fully dimensioned. Um, so let's do the next one here, which is the volume down. Same deal, uh, 62.43 millimeters. Um, and then we are going to do 4.12. And then the button is 2.66 wide. And this one is also 11, or I'm just gonna actually reference this dimension. You can just click on the dimension and it'll reference that in your drawing. And then same deal, turn construction off. We're gonna make that tangent, tangent, tangent. Um, and I'm also gonna do it down here too, just to be a little quicker. Tangent, tangent, tangent. Going to make a construction line across, across. And then we are going to mirror this over this line. And once again, mirror circle over this. And we are done with that sketch. So now we want to extrude each button the amount that they're supposed to be extruded. And look at that, the action and volume buttons are all extruded the same distance. So we can extrude them all together. And they are going to be extruded out 0 0.45 millimeters. Okay, so I think that this is a great stopping point. Um, we have designed the body of the phone. We designed the buttons on each side of the phone. Um, so that was probably the most simple part of drawing an iPhone. In the next video, we'll cover drawing the camera modules. That's a little more difficult. Um, and then we'll also draw the USB port on the bottom of the phone along with the speaker holes. So that way, if you're designing an accessory, you know to avoid those areas so that you're not affecting the user's sound. So if you like this video or if you have any comments about what I was doing, put a comment down below, like the video, subscribe. Thanks for watching.